A few days ago, I got an email from Brother Kelvin. Shout out to him. And the email brought up this particular article. Uganda's labor export revenue hits $25 billion. That's $6.49 million. That means that Uganda is exporting its labor over to Middle Eastern countries for a profit. The number one country on that list was Saudi Arabia, taking about 90% of the revenue. The second country was the United Arab Emirates at about 5%. And within that number, 77% of those people going were women, while about 23% of those were men. And it kind of made me think about the whole Middle Eastern topic in Dubai and United Emirates as a whole. Rewind, Dima. Some of the best videos on my channel have talked about that same subject. And in, and in Uganda, Women who go abroad to work in the Middle East are called Kadamas, meaning that these are ladies who go abroad to earn money to send back home or to start another life. Sometimes the contracts are two to three years, but once they go and they're excited to go, they pay money to go. They have to save money to go. They find out quite quickly that now they are a skin color. Well, what does that mean? You see, when you're in Uganda, everybody is what? You guessed it, black. Once you get over to Dubai, you guessed it, everybody's black. So you don't have to say that everybody's black because everybody knows they're black or African. When you get to Dubai, you now become black because everybody else is Arab or white or whatever else. Filipino, now we're dealing with racism, sometimes outright. And things happen in Dubai that are quite atrocious towards the ladies. Now, let me kind of go back to this particular brother. He noticed that there was a disparity in income. He's an African-American living in Dubai, and he had a big issue with how Africans are being mistreated in Dubai when it came to pay and gap differences. The problems African workers are facing in foreign countries has become disturbing. I will speak on other races in my next post, but I'm starting with expats from African nations. Don't flood my comments with Middle East rhetoric because I have seen Middle Eastern governments send aid to Africa and have watched others destroy Africa. And when these destroyers come to foreign countries as expats, they are an extension of their nations. My only thing to you is that Start hiring Africans in senior positions or go kick rocks because you're not helping. To the African expat, as I am brown and I'm obviously a descendant of Africa, let's have an open discussion about the challenges you face when living abroad. Here's where the challenges start. There's no one in senior positions that represents your race when you are working abroad. So it's hard to shake this stigma. Any race, that has laborers, laborers or maids will be classified even if you aren't a maid or a laborer. If you have a degree in experience, you will still be classified as inexpensive labor based on your predecessors regardless of the occupation. It's very rare to see Africans in senior positions and this lessens your chances of being employed in positions and positions you may qualify for. And the proof is this, studies show that expats usually hire people that are from the same country and share the same cultural similarities. So until Africans start filling these senior positions, things will be bleak, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean you lay down. You have the ability to make change with incremental steps. It starts with you. Here's a positive. America has caught on to how Africans are excelling in math and science. And they are, the, they are brain draining Africa by offering citizenships to Africa and high salaries to their academic elite. So stay in the moment, continue to educate yourselves because for sure other nations will catch on to your academic, your academic prowess. What's the solution here? Educate yourselves. Before you go abroad, 
because it will increase your chances of being hired in positions outside of the service sector, which is the worst for you. For those already here, the biggest complaint I'm getting in my DM is that you can't save money. So I'm going to address this. The first thing I always ask you is, do you have a budget? Because if you don't have a budget, your life will be a mess. I don't care what your salary is. A budget creates a system and a system creates discipline. Your budget is written like this. How much money can I spend monthly? How much money can I send home on a monthly basis? How much money can I spend for food? And lastly, you must save 10% of your salary every month. DM me. Stay strong and keep fighting. Now that brother's name is Jamie Watkins Podcast. He seems to be living in the Middle East. But I kind of want to deal with some of the things he's talking about. The problem is that Africans in Dubai are not really trying to get the higher paying jobs because those people that have those jobs typically hire their own. And I get what he is trying to say, you know, hey, you need to save your money and all these things. And yeah, you need to secure yourself with getting those jobs. I want to take it a step further. The biggest problem is why are they there in the first place? Why are they not in their own home country when they are earning? Why don't they see the opportunities in their own home country as we might see Africa or how they might see Europe or United States? And YouTuber Indigire, who just made a video on this particular topic, she lived in Dubai. So this is what she had to say about how she used to see Europe in America and now how she sees the opportunities in her own place. Overall, I myself, I would love to travel the African continent. I like I now want to travel to do the African continent than the Western world. But before I went to Dubai, I would not have had that feeling because it is the picture I gave you that if you go to the West, you are better. But then when I went to Dubai, I got to see the opportunities I could have in my own country. I got to see the nice places I could visit in the African continent. I got to meet different African people and have conversations with them. And I got to understand, oh, we are not actually different. We are the same people. Because in my country, we don't learn about other African people. We mostly learn about the Western people than the actual people that look like us in the continent. Now, let me go back to Jamie Watkins, okay? He's going to bring out some very interesting points about how a lot of these people are going abroad just to send money back to their house. He's going to really give some good ethers. Let's check it out. This is for all the young, innocent women and some men I have consulted regarding your struggles while living in a foreign land, whether it's in the Middle East, Asia or Africa. I'm directing my anger towards your parents. You parents should be ashamed of yourselves. You allow and send your young adult children to foreign countries seeking a better life for you, not them. Tell the truth, it's about finances. Your young adult children come to me seeking guidance, feeling insecure and confused because they're outside of their familiar surroundings. This is not their element. So things change, the dynamics change. Your children find themselves compelled to undertake various challenges living in a foreign country alone. They're in a desert, alone, by themselves. It's a different scenario when making decisions at home with the support of your family compared to being alone in a foreign country trying to figure things out. Unfortunately, this happens. I know people who do that. People go to Dubai, work very, very, very long hours. A lot of single moms go to Saudi Arabia, Oman, places like that. They clean these big, huge houses, you know, with like eight or nine rooms just to send money back to their family or to their father or their mother. And you know what? It's completely okay. And guess what? It's very hard for them to save. It's very hard for them to do things. But the number one reason is because they don't see the opportunities that are here on the continent. They don't see the opportunities in their own home country. And an American can come here and be like, wow, I just got here to Uganda and I see a lot of opportunities that we can do within the first year. 
Well, it's kind of like me when I was in the black community in America. I didn't really see the opportunities like a foreigner would because I grew up there, right? So the situation is this, when these people are coming from Dubai and they are going there, they're being treated like second class citizens and you know we're trying to fight for their right to be there, really what it is is that we need to fight for their right to be back in their own home country. And again, we gotta look at, as a group, you do what you allow people to do to you. And I'm gonna keep talking about this on this channel. Nobody is stopping black people from working together. Do you guys really know what opportunity is on the continent? Even me on this channel, this is the King Ghana YouTube channel. I was ready to quit this channel last year. I was tired of this channel. I was tired of y'all. Do you know how much opportunity just having this channel relating to the brothers and sisters Literally, with something like this, you don't even really worry about money or worry about opportunities because there's so much opportunity on the continent of Africa in the black world. You literally cannot get it all. That is how much opportunity or how much money. Now, what you want to do with the opportunity, it takes work. It takes investment. It takes time. It takes planning. But you, we can scale up each other. We can invest. We can do things. We can do a lot of great things on the continent of Africa. And then those of us who are enlightened, it's up to us to want to change the mindset to say, hey, brother, you don't need to go over to Europe. You don't need to go over to Dubai. You can own your own stuff here and be excellent in the business here and create opportunities for yourself and your people here. Just like those people in Dubai saw it 80 years ago or 70 years ago. Hey, I would argue that maybe uh, the UAE was underdeveloped uh, then Kenya or Uganda. In fact, I've heard several stories talking about Kenya was giving them aid or Uganda was giving them aid and Singapore aid, but now they give us aid here. Why? Because we have been brainwashed to believe that what we have is not good enough. But whenever you go to Dubai, you don't see them growing food. I, I was at uh, one of the stores. I was I think it was like Sprouts or Sprouts Market when I was there. I saw some Zimbabwean grapes. So Africa is still feeding a lot of people in Dubai and in, in, in the UAE, and they're making money as they're buying food cheap over here. It's selling it to the whites and European expats over there. Why? We have the opportunity to do everything right here from the continent or in the black world. We don't need to go over there, but when we don't want to put in the intellectual heavy lifting to help our people and to reinvest into ourselves, yes, you're always going to go to somewhere else and get less and get treated less than and get treated bad. And that happens. When you don't invest in your people, nobody will invest into your people. That's up for us to do. So guys, what do you think of your boy Shay Duke Jackson? Back at it again here on the King Gunner channel. I really appreciate you for all you do. Scrap the bell where 